Well, here we are. I'm in one of our uh, corn food plots right here, as you can tell. Um, today's video is going to be about basically a trail camera update and a food plot update of pretty much all of our food plots, corn, soybean, and brassica food plots. We try and keep it under 10 minutes, but it might go over. Anyways, you can tell these deer are really starting to decimate this corn. They're really starting to move into the food plot and starting to eat it right off the cobs. Um, they have a trail right here along the edge in the brassicas. You can see it right there. And there's a huge rub right here on the cedar tree. And then I got my trail camera right up here on this little um, black walnut tree. So, like I said, I'll put up I'll put up all the trail camera pictures pictures at the end of the video. But uh, so basically, you can kind of see this trail they have. We just had a ton of rain la the last two nights, so all the fresh tracks have, have been washed away. But you can see there's a trail here that kind of runs along the edge all the way along the edge and it cuts in here. And they also have a spot to cut in right over here too. Rub over there. But here, look at this corn. Gone, gone, gone. And usually the ones like that could have been ripped down from a squirrel or a raccoon. But if they're still on the cob like this, usually it's from a deer because, I mean, squirrels have to rip them down and they usually drag them in the woods. That's what all, there's a few of them over there in, in the brush. And the raccoons usually just pull the whole stalk down, kind of like some of these stalks in here that are just laying on the ground. But the deer will eat on them when they're on the ground too. But if you see them on the stalk like this and gone, that's almost guaranteed from deer, like a lot of these ones are. It's not a good sign. I thought uh, I would have had a little bit more food than this, but look at this. There's a lot of corn gone. Right here's a couple. When I get to this side of the plot, it looks a little better. There's definitely less eight nine over here. So I'm surprised. They've really cleaned house over here. I mean, this this, this food plot is probably not going to last as long as I was thinking it was going to last. I was hoping it would last until like late February, you know, around shed season. But I don't know. I hope it does. It's only about two more months from now. But yeah, we got quite a bit more corn on the other side of the property. So that food plot actually is a little bit bigger than this one. So... Maybe that one will last a little longer. All right, so this right here is a, a small soybean food plot that I hand drilled this year. And then we drilled in a few rows of corn for like screening and pretty much everything, almost all the beans and obviously all the corn is pretty much gone too. You can get in here and see this. I mean, there's hardly any beans left. It's probably like a quarter acre, maybe close to a half acre of beans. But I'm really surprised how fast they clean these up. These were really good. I mean, they're about waist high still. Tons of deer sign in here. There is some beans on the ground here still. These will get covered with snow and then the deer will start pawing around. But I got a couple brassicas here. And then we got some corn in here, like I said. all gone. And you can clearly see like 95% of it's gone. Maybe 90%. Because there's quite a bit on the ground. But still. I'm kind of surprised how fast they clean this up. Alright, so as you can tell, there's nothing here. Nothing here. Nothing here. You can see the stalk is completely gone. This is probably it right, right here. This is from raccoons or squirrels because they rip it off and then they eat it. But you can see like this one over here. 
this is from deer because it's still on there and gone. I'm not saying the raccoons won't do this, but usually the raccoons pull them off like this one's completely gone. Here's one that's on here, so probably from the deer. All right, so this corn right here, we've got about eight rows of it. It's right next to these brassicas right here. This is all like super wet ground. So this corn was put in, I think it was, I'll have the date up on the screen, I'll have to look it up. But it was put in later than all of our other food plots of corn. And it ended up getting taller and producing bigger sized cobs. Because the ground here is so moist and it's just such dark, rich soil. You can see there's plenty of corn left in here. So I'm kind of, looks like this corn will last quite a bit. Because now that I get in here, it looks like there's quite a few cobs in here that are still, haven't been eaten on, but there is definitely some along the edges more that have been browsed or eaten on. Like I said, this stuff grew really good. I plan to put a lot of corn in the same area next year. Um, if you get in here, look, all this green down here, this is all brassicas I mixed with the corn. So essentially we have a standing cornfield with smaller brassicas mixed with the corn. So this is like a double food plot. You got all this green forage with the corn. Right here. And you can't get a much better food plot than brassicas and corn mixed together. Right here's a full cob that hasn't even been touched. Yeah, there's tons of corn left in this plot. It's only eight rows, about maybe 100 yards long. But I don't think the deer eat on this one as much as they have been eating on some of the other corn areas. But they'll get here eventually. Alright, so this is the last spot. This is uh, the Field of Dreams. we got about maybe half acre of corn, a quarter acre to maybe a half acre of soybeans on the other side. And... Uh, as you can tell, the, the farmer's field, the neighbor's field, is finally picked. That stuff was up until early December. They must have picked it, you know, pretty recently. So now that that's all gone, I mean, these deer are really going to focus on our food plots here. So they're about to get hit really hard. And right here, I got brassicas mixed with the corn too, just like the other spot. You can tell the brassicas are getting munched on. The corn's getting hammered too. And uh, that's a pretty good sized ball to get in here. Like this, I mean, they already got this browsed all the way up. Pretty good sized bulb there. A lot of this corn's already gone, this corner, but if we get to the middle, I, I expect there to be a lot more corn in there. Let's uh, head over there, actually. So this area right here where the corn is pretty small, this is wetter soil, and we had to plant this. It's like a square right here. We had to plant this about maybe a week and a half, two weeks after we planted the rest of this field. You can tell this corn over here is much better and made a lot bigger cobs. And there's actually quite a bit of it left too, so that's a good thing. Some here are gone, but if you go in a few rows, a lot of it left. But some get ate on too. Look at the size of some of these cobs here. I mean, that's pretty good size there. And the one right next to it is just as big. I can't believe the size of the corn we were able to grow. There's a lot of that in here left. But like I said, this area is only about, at most, maybe three quarters of an acre of corn, so it's still gonna go pretty quick too. So this is where our soybeans start. These ones are pretty, pretty much picked over too, but there definitely is more than in the other soybean food plot. As you can tell. Well, they're pretty thin too. I did mix in some winter rye in here. That's what this green stuff is. Didn't really have a whole lot of time to grow, but it's going to come back really strong in the early spring. Like in uh, February, March, and April if it melts off and thaws out. But yeah, you get onto this end, I guess it is pretty thin. Yeah, I will be doing another update probably eventually once we get some more snow, probably probably end up being in January. I'll probably have some trail camera pictures to put up then too. But uh, looks like we're gonna have quite a bit of food left. You know, at this point, we're about mm, maybe halfway through the winter. Halfway would probably be the middle of January because well, anyways, I just hope we have enough food to last all the way into like the end of February. That way we can, you know, have, you know, kind of control most of the deer movement 
throughout shed season and maybe have a chance of finding something in or near or somewhere on the property some sheds that'd be nice but yeah so stay tuned for those updates and thanks for watching guys all right so this is right next to the last food pot i was at in the video and uh this buck right here i believe is six years old we got about three years of history with him and he's definitely the biggest buck i know about out there i mean he puts this buck to shame even though this is a still a nice buck but uh, the other buck is just extraordinary and this right here is another nice buck we have about three years of pictures with him too he's grown quite a bit he's only a three-year-old here's some does and stuff during the daylight small buck there they're actually drinking out of the water hole right here and then they come back and hit it on their way back to their beds in the morning and then this right here is another trail camera location same buck two small bucks sparring right here this is kind of a grassy trail heading out towards some food plots of brassicas and corn and uh, a few during the daylight but a lot of nighttime activity we just have like none of the bedding like i've talked about in other videos and most of the bedding is off our property on the neighbors because we just don't have much cover and uh, here's that really big buck too you'll see some really good pictures of him coming up later on too and i just it'd be really nice if we could find one of his sheds or it'd just be nice if we could find any sheds and this right here is the spot i'm calling the checkpoint this is one of those vine mock scrapes again and this is like centralized right in the you know center of our property there's tons of travel going um north to south and east to west so this is like a perfect spot for a vine mock scrape and a trail camera there was tons of activity here during the rut too tons and tons of different bucks cruising through here at night so and as you can tell this is uh middle of december and there's still lots of bucks hitting this and i'm sure they're gonna keep hitting it pretty much all year long all the way into I'm, I'm sure in the summertime we'll get some deer on it as you can tell the does and fawns they do use it too small bucks medium-sized bucks big bucks does fawns every deer if you put these things in a, the right location all kinds of deer are going to use this not just bucks it does help if you spray a little circle underneath the vine mock scrape just to get the you don't have to spray you could just work it up too just to get the mock scrape going this right here is a really nice looking young buck too i believe he's probably three years old he's got pretty good genetics too and uh, lots of smaller bucks running around out there too fawns does are hitting it too um and some bucks are really aggressive with the vine mock scrape other ones looks like they just uh sniff it or lick it and other ones don't even come into it i have two bucks so as you can tell, there's a buck that just walked in, and here you are. These two bucks start sparring. The one on the right, we have three years of history with, and I hardly, he hardly ever uses the mock scrapes, but the one on the left is always hitting it. So I think some of them are more aggressive than other ones on the mock scrapes, and some are a little shy. Like this one is really aggressive. I got tons of pictures of that one. As you can tell, these does and fawns are crazy about this thing too, and it's just crazy how many pictures you can gather here. And this buck right here is a really smart one. He hardly ever comes in. I am just so glad I set up a few of these vine mock scrapes this year because they I've just gathered tons of information. I mean, these spots were already decent spots already, but adding these scrapes here just you know attracts these deer even more to this spot. And this big ten pointer, he's came in ever since like basically October first. I started getting pictures of him. So stay tuned. I'll be coming out with a brassica update video very soon and some more and similar uh, trail camera updates too. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, see you next time.